everyone to this week's chill I, with I, sorry i forgot to we, we, can't, we, we can't go without this it's always ad lib at chill with Jim. i, I couldn't have done it without that it, it's a countdown you know so big fight you got to have a countdown first well i understand and i i wouldn't have been able to do anything without that so thank you <laughs> so um everybody out there welcome to this week's chill with jim i'd like to thank you all for joining us on this episode at chill with jim it is always business up top and pajamas on the bottom still working from home Still working from home, almost a year in, but we're still rocking the pajamas. So uh, I am your host, Jim McCarthy, and I am the client advocate for Strix Louisiana. My job is to make sure that our clients are set up with the best equipment, the best software, and the best IT solutions to make sure that their businesses are running at optimal efficiency. See, see, see. We also have David Diarman with us. Hey, Jim. Thanks for uh, the introduction there. I am David Diarman, owner of Strix LA. I appreciate everyone being out there. This, this battle today that we're talking about, it's epic. It's epic. And uh, before we start, that we do like to uh, tell you just a little bit about Strix. And uh, so at Strix Louisiana, we believe there's always a better, simpler, more secure way to do just about everything in this world. So what that means to us is we are constantly searching and adapting our processes to make sure that we do indeed have the best solutions in place. We believe that part of this responsibility is to help educate our clients as well as others on how to best use their current resources. We like to bring awareness to security risks that are happening right now. And then we also just go into general tech trends that are happening in the IT world today. So today, what we're going to be discussing is an epic showdown. We're going to be going for the through the differences, pros and cons of Zoom meetings against versus the Microsoft Teams meetings. And so there's a lot of information here that we're going to go over. But before we start our match, let's take a little trip into the past to see how video conferencing has actually evolved into the technology most of us are using now every single day. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And David, just make sure and let me know if you see a black and white picture. There it is. I see it. All right. Well, so video conferencing has actually been around for quite a lot longer than I had even thought. Um, here's a picture of, in, of 1936. So in 1936, surprisingly, Germany had come up with a prototype for the modern video telephone, telephony. Tele is that how you say it? Tel telephony. telephony. Thank you, telephony, <laughs> I knew I had it. Um, this was actually the, the year of the Summer Olympics that were being held in Germany and a German inventor presented this first version, this first prototype you see over here uh, to the commercial masses. And um, initially this set right here was actually coax cable. So the kind of the same cable you use for your TV, it was run about 100 miles between Berlin and Leipzig, or Leipzig, and the system was named the Gagessian Franschenschen Glock again. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Which roughly translates to the visual telephone system. Um, eventually, they actually got this to work over 620 miles of coax cable. They were able to um, transmit the video. It came with a display, a camera, 
lighting devices, and then it had a regular telephone that you would use for the audio. And they actually had some video booths that were deployed in post offices and, and other places where you could go in and use this communication. Um, so what happened in about 1939 with the start of the Second World War, basically this technology was no longer heard of, almost like something happened in Germany <laughs> uh, to wipe out a few things. So um, you really, after this, you didn't see a whole lot of video conferencing technology coming out um, and being promoted they were still working on it. Uh, and actually in 1964, we see the next, and I'll pull up, um, the next video conferencing uh, unit here was actually on display at the 1964 World's Fair in New York. And uh, it was called the Picture Phone from AT&T. And at the fair here, you were actually allowed to sit down and communicate via the, the video with the other person on the other line. Uh, and you actually, in the fair, they gave you about 10 minutes to really get used to this. Um, what AT&T was focusing this, this uh, technology on was for commercial use, because it was very expensive. They only later on started to kind of market it to the general public. So this particular machine that they're showing here, which I think I have a better picture kind of looks like this uh, up close. You could use graphics. You could actually put you know, um, different pictures and stuff up. But the, the machine was extremely expensive. Uh, the price was $160 per month for the equipment and the service. This included your first 30 minutes. And then after that, every additional call was 25 cents per minute. So. In today's dollars, this equivalates to roughly a thousand bucks a month for the equipment and the service. Plus, you would pay a dollar seventy-five per minute after that first thirty minutes. Um, get pricey. So it got pricey. It got expensive very fast. And uh, besides the price, the machine was clunky. It was very difficult for users to set up, and so it didn't really take off. Um, but for the 1960s, it's pretty amazing that they had this technology. I have a few more pictures here. Um, here you can see grandma and grandpa. Grandma and grandpa, did you, did you hit the mute button? I think you're muted. Uh, can you hit the mute? We can't hear you. So there's grandma and grandpa coming in. And uh, <laughs> why do you go to that, to that uh, Midwestern accent when you do the grandma, grandpa? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> um it was probably all my acting careers that, oh. yeah that, that's it, it's all from up north right yeah i think my video just went crazy too so here's an actual ad for which um western electric was actually part of at&t so um someday you'll be a star and i think today we're all stars on zoom and teams so um and then here we have uh another picture of it being used and Honey, did you did you make sure and put out the trash? Darling, you know this is a super expensive. Why are you calling me at work to tell me to put out the trash? Well, I just wanted to make sure you put out the trash today. Uh, so you can see it was used for all kinds of different things. Uh, and those are my jokes. Hopefully they're not <laughs> offensive in any way. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, with the clunky start uh, of the, the video phone, you know, this one kind of, like I said, it kind of went away. <clears throat> Didn't hear much about it until about the 1980s um, when there started to be a lot of the sci-fi fantasy videos were showing people uh, using video technology. Um, I'll, I got a picture here. Let me pull it up for everybody. So, you know, you had the Jetsons, you had uh, Space Odyssey, and then um, this was one of the other older sci-fi films here. And so at this point, people were really starting to talk about it. And so some of the companies out there were like, you know what, it's time for us to take another crack at this. So there was a, there was an, um, a company called Compression Labs that had a system that there was a video conferencing system that again was sold mostly to corporations. 
it was only two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to get it installed and up and running. That's it. Uh, not bad, not bad. And then this other company, PictureTel, actually, they made it much more affordable at eighty thousand dollars. And so here's a picture of that PictureTel here. Um, you see the TV that. And I know the 1980s, they had really high def cameras, right? So um, you have the TV in the middle. And then this was a little video camera up on top of the TV. And then you had your controller station here. So quite a few buttons. Again, um, probably not the easiest solution for people, especially in the consumer world. Uh, in the 1990s, we had some major advance advancements in IP technology, uh, the internet was coming into play. Video compression uh, enabled a lot more video to be sent over longer distances and come in with better quality. So IBM took notice of this and they had a similar system set up to that, um, that one we just saw for businesses and they went ahead and dropped that price to only $20,000. <laughs> um, but what Macintosh did is they entered they introduced this, um, oh, and there's, there's another picture of kind of what that picture tile would look like, uh, a little bit higher quality. So you had a camera sitting on top with a mic. Um, this is one of their closer to the 90s models here. Um, and all on a little re wheelie cart for you. Um, after that, Microsoft actually launched the CUC Me platform. Um, this was all over a computer. The only thing here was there was no audio. There was no audio. So most of this you would have, you could still have your separate video um, windows here, but a lot of it, you're just talking over the chat. That's and crazy. So, so the, 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 the video they got, but the audio not, it seems like it definitely be the other way around. Yeah, it, it, it does. And then also, why does this girl have a headset on if she can't talk <laughs> with a microphone here? Um, and so, but that was a an, kind of an early introduction to the 90s versions here. And then early 2000s really where the, the game got stepped up. Polycom came in. Uh, you guys have probably seen Polycom's equipment out there. They still do a lot of the phone conferencing. Um, they played a huge role in the evolution of video conferencing. They came out with the View Station. Uh, this is the View Station, a little bit newer model. The other one didn't have as fancy a camera that could adjust left and right. But uh, that was the package you would get as you'd get this View Station. Um, and actually, Polycom in 1998, when they first debuted their View Station, they sold about a billion dollars worth of this equipment. And so you can see here from the user manual, you only had about seven cords you had to plug in. Um, and once you had it all plugged up, uh, the mic was separate, the power was separate, and then the TV interaction was separate. Um, you could go ahead and you could get your video up on screen. And um, so that's a little bit of the, I think that's my last picture here, yes. Uh, so I will stop sharing my screen right now. Where's my interface? Give me a second here. It's, there it is, stop sharing. Okay, and put my video back on. Oh, you stopped my video. Oh, so sorry. David there doesn't want me there to be. Go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm back. Um, and so that was just a little bit of a view from the past. I really had a fun time looking at those pictures. I can't believe this technology has been out for almost, you know, well, the start of it was almost 100 years ago, the 1930s, that they really started to get video conferencing going. They actually had a working one. Um, in the mid 2000s, this was a crucial time for video conferencing. Uh, courts, law firms, military, they were all using video conferencing and it became uh, much more available to everybody. Um, they had started to roll out some conferencing kiosks in different places and then mobile, mobile technology came out to enhance some of that collaboration across borders. 
Um, in 2003, there was actually a huge advancement in the telehealth. Um, this is when they first, the, tra the first transatlantic telesurgery, which was a video technology that allowed a surgeon in the US to control a robot overseas to perform a successful gallbladder surgery. Oh. So, you know, they had to do it overseas because no one in America would have been like, <laughs> oh, go ahead and do that on me. And I, I assure you, none of the health insurance companies would have let them. So they went ahead and put that overseas to do that. Um, so a little bit of history there. I hope it was fun. I had fun. And without further ado, today, we are going to bring you the main event of the millennium, Zoom versus Microsoft Teams. In the red corner, weighing in at nine years since its debut, we have Zoom Shakalaka, the longtime leader in modern video communication. It's known for its easy to use and reliable cloud-based platform for video conferencing, telecommuting, distance learning, and social interaction. And in the blue corner, Weighing in at four years since its official release, we have Microsoft's Teams Me Up Scotty. <laughs> since 2017, this collaborative workspace within Microsoft 365 acts as a central hub for your workplace conversations. It includes video meetings, collaborative teamwork, and document sharing. It is being held as hailed as the number one contender for workplace productivity, collaboration, and application integration. You know, one thing that I think needs to be pointed here, Teams, Zoom, much easier to say than that first thing you mentioned. From Zoom 1930. No, oh, no, no, the, the, the shocking shocking? Be, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad they progressed in the names there, made them, made them a little easier. A little easier, a one syllable, so that's yep. nice. Even the other Polycom, PictureTel. Four letters versus five letters, that's, there you go. that's impressive. That's efficiency. Uh, it is, it is. And so at a very high level here, Microsoft Teams and Zoom meetings, they overlap in quite a few ways and they compete in quite a few ways. Uh, both of them are going to offer video services, video conferencing, um, but we wanted to really kind of drill in a little bit deeper and more of their nuanced features, uh, more of their, which each one is kind of a little bit better at the other one we're doing. We'll go into some pricing, some integrations, and just how an organization or a typical user can use these and some of the trade-offs there. So we'll look at some of which Zoom has been around a little bit longer. So we'll go ahead and start with some of the pros of Zoom here. And um, Zoom has an, a vicious left hook, okay? They have, they're known for their easy to use user interface. Um, the experience of the user is really where Zoom has excelled. Uh, all of their users say it's simple. To, well, most of their users say it's, <laughs> uh, there's no such thing as all. So most of their users are going to say it's, it's simple to use. The ability to get onto a call is very easy. And I can actually set up a meeting myself with little to no training or IT support at all. Um, especially once it's installed, it's pretty much good to go after that. Um, yeah, I, I I think that's a that's a big feature. They uh, to me they were the the first video conferencing to really just figure figure out the ease of use. There there were many before Zoom, and and when you look at at the adoption rates, uh, it, it's things like WebEx. A lot of people have have used WebEx in the past. Uh, Go to Meeting, all of all of these other uh, applications that that were leading the way five years ago, really. Uh, and then, and then Zoom, they just they they did a terrific job making it super easy, and that uh, I think was is probably the biggest thing because it, it like you said, it it's a body shot. People adopted it so quickly just because it was the easiest thing out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 
I think really Zoom was probably the first video platform I, I started to use and, and enjoy. Um, it's pretty much the click of a button. They've got it to where it's the click of a button, maybe a couple buttons, you know, a couple clicks there and you're in. Um, and so what they also have done recently is they've added some new features like the waiting room. So your video participants can't just come in and be right on the video without you giving them permission. This is a good one, especially for last year's Zoom bombings that we all um, heard about in the news for a while there where yeah. unwelcome guests would join your Zoom and do bad things. Unwelcome uh, things. Unwelcome things, yep. <laughs> um, they came up with this cool virtual background like I've got here uh, where you can pretty much put any picture. You can actually do video now as well in the background. Um, and besides that, they have a large base. So you can have multiple, multiple, multiple people on a Zoom call, Zoom conference. Um, I think their base package allows you to have over 30 participants in it. And their later on package, it's over 100. So yeah. um, massive, massive. Uh, there's other products out there like Ring Central that has a, a similar interface. Um, and uh, to, yeah, to, to, to say it's similar, I mean, well, they use it, they, don't they? Yeah, they use Zoom. They, they just put their name on it. So it's uh, it, it's actually the exact same interface. If, if you're a, a Ring Central customer, um, you're you're getting Zoom. So that that comes with your voice over IP platform if you get Ring Central. Um, and so Zoom, Zoom is doing a, a good job of getting the name out there. Uh, and then it's got some good security features along the way, privacy capabilities, especially since the Zoom, bomb, Zoom bombing was taking place. I mean, within a couple of weeks, they had a solution in place for that. Yeah, that's, you know, we're, we're talking about this being a, uh, like a boxing match. Uh, that's Muhammad Ali stuff there. You float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Uh, their, their ability to to react quickly to what the market was presenting, uh, it, it, that was super impressive to me. They, they, the, the security issues came up and they, they knocked them out quick for a large company to be uh, that quick in deploying updates. That's, that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and quick to to go ahead and and put out there what the public likes. So, I mean, I, however they were getting feedback with Zoom, it, it it's great because they they add in a feature. If the feature wasn't really being used, they would pull it out, put a new one in. And so you've seen the features advance. You've seen them try quite a bit of of new things. And when the new things stick, they put them in place. And when they don't, they uh, yank them out pretty quick. So great marketing. Uh, great, easy to use. Uh, and so those are some of the highlights of Zoom. Um, we'll go ahead and just look at some of the pros of Microsoft Teams here. So I believe I said it was in the blue corner. We had Microsoft Teams. Um, the difference between the two is, is Microsoft's got integration ability to the max. So Teams integrates with your Office 365, pretty much all of the most, I gotta stop saying all, most of the Microsoft products out there talk to each other, they integrate with each other. And so what Microsoft Teams became was kind of like a one-stop shop for many organizations because they can have a chat within Teams, video conferencing, they can make phone calls, um, they have a collaborative workspace with the teams and the channels that they offer. And so mix that with all of the integrations out there and Microsoft really for an organization or for your business, they put in a great amount of tools to help you be productive. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a, a, a lot behind their punch when, when you know, they, they bring that, that Mike Tyson punch to you because they're, they're delivering so much along with the, the, um, the team's package. So it, bringing all of that power along with it, that does a lot. It does. It does. And, and they do a lot of the same things that Zoom does. Uh, but when Teams first came out, I know a lot of this, the people who tried to use it, 
it was a little more difficult to use. Um, at that point, you had to have a Microsoft account to get into Teams. And so then, then the user has to go in and set up an account, remember the password. So, you know, with Zoom, I'm just clicking a button and getting in. So I think that pushed quite a few people away uh, at the beginning. But Teams has made it where there's a much easier click to join type feature where you don't really need a Microsoft account to get in. Um, and then on top of that, you know, it's kind of tough to compare the two because they don't, but they both do video conferencing, but Teams is almost like a Slack on steroids where it, it has all those Slack messaging, team collaboration, but it also has the video conferencing. Um, and so once they started to integrate that, you look at, it hit about 40, uh, 44 million daily users um, coming from, you know, just a few years. I said in 2017, it came out. They're at 44 million daily users now. So Microsoft's doing quite a bit right there. Um, yeah, I, I, I think you really have to look at, at where they came from. So Zoom, it was always just a, a, an online meeting platform. That's that's what it was developed for. Slack was was uh, excuse me uh, Teams was more for within an organization, and it, it was more about chatting and collaborating within an organization. Uh, what what happened really? I, I I'd say is COVID happened, um, and. It, people all of a sudden needed to reach everyone through a platform. Microsoft is watching Zoom gobble up market share. Um, and so they started making changes to, to Teams. And it really, if, if you watch the things that, that, that Teams has added over the last year, it's been, they, they watch Zoom and what's successful with Zoom Microsoft implements, and they've, they've always been that way. They watch what other people do. They let other people be the, the, the guinea pig and test things out. And then they bring all of that power that they have and they implement the things that, that work. But uh, yeah, from, from the very beginning, Teams was more about within a company. They've had to, to now adjust to, uh, to open it up a bit more. And I, I think they've done a, a, a decent job of that. I agree. I agree. And that, that was, you know, I had next up was just since the start of this, the pandemic teams realized like, we got to make this easier for people. We've got to have a much easier way for everybody to just get on. We don't only want the IT professionals and only the businessman using it. Um, they really tried to market it more towards having the features that your everyday work from home person might need. Um, it, it, and like David said, it, <laughs> oh, Zoom, people like this on Zoom. So let's go ahead and, and put it in. Um, yeah. And for educators right now, I, I, there should be, I believe there's a free version of it out there for all the educators. So a lot of students are using it. Um, if you're teaching, it's a great, it's a great source. You don't have to pay for it in that, that sense then. And um, really, let's see here. Um, They've upped up, they've upped the host calls with, they can have now 250 members on a screen yeah, at that, the same time. That, that was a change they made pretty quick uh, after COVID. Uh, it, it, they started, uh, it, it, it shows you that a lot of the, the throttling that goes on with how many people can be on a call and, and you know what you can do with the platform. It, it's all it's all about marketing it's all about sales uh because COVID hit and they just turned some things on they said you know this is what people need so now instead of being limited to 50 people you can have 250 people it uh, all they did was basically flip a switch on that they did have some some internal things to consider because it it, it does require more resources but um in the end microsoft is, is able to spin up resources very quickly yeah, yeah, and they, they saw in um, April of last year that a lot of people didn't like, there was only four screen, four people you could see at once. And so what they did was they made it up to 
nine participants could be seeing on the screen. So they're constantly changing. Uh, I know I've, I've been on Zoom calls where I think you can have almost 24, 24 different people that you can see at the same time. Um, and I know that gets a little bit overwhelming. Yeah, it's, it's hard to really even, even see what's going on at that point. I, uh, I know some teachers and they were saying that, so this year I'd pushed them into using video and they had a, a class that was 30 people. So now they, they had to switch between Zoom sessions to see all the kids. <laughs> right. So could you imagine trying to teach and having to look at the other, uh, let me make sure Tommy's not flicking off the camera. Ah, Tommy, <laughs> all right, turn his video off. Where's that turn off feature? Okay go back, you know, I can't imagine having 30 students on, on a Zoom call. You have to make sure they're engaged. I, yeah. I felt really bad for the teachers at that point. Um, but we can look at some of the, the pricing as well, um, to, just to kind of go over what you're looking at. Uh, both Teams and Zoom do offer a free version of the platform, but most of their advanced features are going to be turned off with that free version. Um, the free version of Teams includes some limited chat options and collaboration. Uh, you do get some of the productivity apps that come with Microsoft, and um, you're able to do some meetings and some calls. Uh, two of the big pieces are missing, though, in the free version, and that includes the administrative tools and Microsoft support. It's funny they list Microsoft support because uh, yeah, is that really a feature? <laughs> I don't, you know. Depends you on who wait. you get. Depends yeah. on who you get. <laughs> if two hours of being on hold is worth it, then it's, yeah, um, it's but. You know, one of the, the things that, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful that we have as, as a Microsoft partner uh, and, and through Pax8, our distributor, is the Microsoft premium support. Um, because I've worked with, with the frontline support and I've worked with the premium support. Those premium guys know what they're doing. The frontline, they're reading that script. <laughs> they're, they're telling you, did you reboot your computer? Uh, did you unplug it when you rebooted your computer? And it, it, that, that's all, you gotta go through 30 minutes Check. of that. And then they escalate it. <laughs> to the guy you really wanted to talk yeah. to. Or the yeah. person you really wanted to talk to. Yeah. But that, the, their premium support is amazing, so. And, and some of those integrations that we mentioned there with the free version, you're not going to get a lot of that capability with them um, with just the free version. It's not going to talk to as many things. You know, you look at teams and outside of the office 365 world, there's integrations built in for all kinds of that was Slack is one of them. It, it's built in to integrate with tons of different systems out there. And so that's what, that's like you said, that's Microsoft's kind of, big power hit there is it talks with and to a lot of different systems. Um, Zoom's free version includes meetings that you can host up to 100 participants, but it's only for 40 minutes. Um, and then you have unlimited time on a one-to-one -one meeting. Uh, you do get their online support and you get the, vi the, the video and web conferencing features. Um, but some of the advanced features are limited. And uh, again, having that 40 minute, once you get over two people, so David and I are talking and we add a third person in, boom, we're cut off at 40 minutes. And um, that's, how they, that's how they get you into buying it. Um, with the Microsoft Premium plan that David talked about, it's actually slightly cheaper per user than Zoom's comparable pro plan is. Um, and so again, what Microsoft is giving you here is not just video conferencing. You get the entire Microsoft 365 suite. David, like tell us some of those apps and different things you can get with that. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that, that that entire suite is phenomenal. You of course get everything that, that people know about your, uh, your Word, Excel, uh, Access, 
Outlook. Those are the things that, that you know, you get Exchange, hosted ex Exchange or Exchange Online, that's your email server. You get, uh, you, you get SharePoint or, or OneDrive basically um, to, to share your files. You get Teams, of course, within Teams or, or outside of it even. You've got Forms, you've got Planner, you've got all of these tools that we have talked about on other episodes of, of Chill with Jim. It, it is, like I said, it is a heavy hand. Whenever, when you think about what your, your dollar is getting you, and you compare, you know, you spend this uh, maybe a little bit more on on uh, on Teams. If you get the business premium version of Microsoft 365, you spend a little bit more. But what you get out of it, uh, dollar for dollar, like pound for pound, you know, dollar for dollar, it is to me not even close. What what you get from Teams is much greater. And I, you know, another way to look at this is. Most businesses, even most people now, they're already paying for an Office or Microsoft 365 program. So they needed Word and they needed Excel. Yeah. So boom, they're paying for it. And now you got teams coming in with it included. Right. So that's where a big, I think, combo coming in from <laughs> uh, Microsoft Teams is, is where they, they can say, well, if you already are paying for office, you don't need to pay for Zoom anymore. Right. We gave you this feature that's exact, very similar to Zoom. Um, and now yeah. with the ease of getting on, uh, they really have that, that one, two combo, one, two, three combo where, especially for the business world, I think it's, it's quite um, attractive. Well. attractive because you, you're, you're, you're you're cutting your expenses and you know as a business you want to cut as many expenses as you as you can without negatively affecting your operations it that's what teams is is giving you here and and to me enhancing a lot of things if you've built teams out if you actually have teams uh you can create meetings within within the team so that all of the information, including the, the recording of the meeting is kept organized with the rest of your conversations. So it, it, you not only get to have the conversation with someone else, it gets to be organized in the right place so that it's easy to go back and reference. Um, yeah, that, that's, it, it, it brings a whole lot to the table for a business, especially a business that already has Microsoft 365. Yes, yes. I think uh, when you're looking at streaming capabilities, Microsoft is still releasing some of those capabilities. Um, like right now for Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Zoom has that, that market edge again because they offer this, the streaming, the go lives, the um, streaming to multiple platforms, but Microsoft is starting to dip their toe in. Yeah, I, and, and I think again, you have to look at, at where it's coming from. And the, Microsoft is coming from more of a, a of a secure background. Okay, you're this is part of your Microsoft 365. There's a lot of security that goes along with it. You're trying to protect your information. Whereas Zoom, it, it's all about easy to use. It's all about getting out there. Not so much worried about security. And so they're more than happy to just integrate with Facebook and integrate with YouTube and, and get all of those integrations so you can just blast this stuff out. You're not worried about security. Yeah. If, if you do have some current concerns around security, you, you will appreciate that Teams is, let's be careful about what we open up here. We're gonna, we're gonna be very, uh, very sure of ourselves if we open up an integration. Yeah. That's a great point. And, and also, I think um, with, so maybe it's not as attractive to a single user that already is used to Zoom and doesn't really use any Microsoft Office products yet. So I, I don't think we're to the point yet where solely, you know, just for the video conferencing itself or the video calls that people are going to drop their Zoom if they if they don't, if they're, they're not using Microsoft 365. Yeah. I don't think we're to that point yet where the everyday individual is gonna say, well, let me sign up for Office or Microsoft 365 
and use all of these features. So Zoom is a great fit for that market. Uh, and right now, Teams is a, I don't know if they're targeting that market as much as a business. Well, you, you know, they originally with Teams or, or with Microsoft's 365, there were, uh, I, I, think, I think there was a five user minimum or something like that. So, you know, if at, at $12.50 uh, per user, you're looking at $65 for, for uh, um, to, to get started with Microsoft 365. Oh, they've got, yeah, a month, yeah. Um, they've gotten rid of that. So now you can, as, as a single user, set up Microsoft 365. And, and I think about the, the micro businesses out there with less than five employees that maybe they, they didn't want uh, Microsoft 365 because there was there was a minimum. Now there's no minimum for for a one person shop. Even if you're just a one person shop, for twelve dollars and fifty cents a month, you can get business class email. You can get access to to Word, Excel, uh, Outlook. You can get all of the other things and Teams with video conferencing. Right. So that that. The, the cheapest package for for Zoom with the the features that you'd be looking for is like fifteen dollars a month or something like yeah. that. Yeah. You're spending more, and look at how much more Teams is bringing or uh, Microsoft 365 is bringing. Yeah, so there you go. Um, Minimum is going to play a big role in that. So now you don't have to have five people. Uh, another great thing is with those apps, you can drop them on five different devices, right? Yeah. They still do that, so. If I have a my business computer, my home computer, and a home and a, my child's uh, school computer, I can put Office or I keep calling it Office, Microsoft 365. I can put Word, Excel, PowerPoint on each one of those machines uh, with just one of those licenses. It's it's still under the same name, the same person, but you're able to distribute it to five different devices. Uh, yeah. Huge, huge. And so, um, I mean, I think we've had a good 12 round fight here. <laughs> uh, both opponents had their moments. They were throwing their lefts, their rights, connecting. We had a couple of knockdowns on each side. And really when it comes down to it, I think we'll call this one a draw and allow the viewer <laughs> to decide which one they thought won because yeah, i mean it, it, I, I guess it all depends on what you're looking for right because yeah. in in some cases zoom is going to be the winner so you listen to this chill with jim and you say well here are the things that i want zoom is obviously the winner and someone else is saying well here's the things i want so teams is obviously the winner and yeah so yeah i like that it, it, it's a draw and and you, the viewer, gets to decide. That's it. That's Choose it. your own adventure. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's the guy sitting at home that uses Zoom with Open Office. Open Office is a free, similar version to Microsoft's products. You get Word, you get Excel, similar. Um, and he's sitting at home and he doesn't want to pay for anything. So the Zoom free version is probably the best way to go yeah. for him. Um, yeah. When you're looking at a business who already pays for this, why not make the switch and get rid of that Zoom bill? You know, yeah. um, 15 bucks a month, uh, depending on how many users that could add up very quickly. So we like to present a lot of these facts for everybody. Some things we're gonna go ahead and more push you towards a decision on cybersecurity. <laughs> we're gonna be a little more forceful on that. But with things like this, it really does. It comes down to what features would you like? What type of situation are you in? Does the shoe fit? So um, depending on how you want to use it, I think you're going to have to pick either the red corner or the blue corner. Uh, so Jim, I mean, I'm sure everybody here realizes that, that Strix, we use Teams. We talk about it all the time. So why are we doing this meeting on Zoom? Well, that's a good question. That's because of the streaming capabilities that we like from Zoom, yeah. correct? 
Yeah, well, you know, it was it was a decision we made a year ago uh, when when uh, COVID first hit, and we realized we needed to up our game in being able to to do video conferencing, uh, to do webinars like these. And we we didn't get into webinars a whole lot. We talked just about the the meeting space. Uh, Zoom has a very nice uh, webinar platform. That's what we're we're using here, and it, it's been very good. Uh, the advancements that Teams has made really for the last uh, several weeks, and it, it, it's the goal right now until things change, is we're doing all of our meetings in Teams. We, we're not setting up Zoom meetings anymore. Uh, we're setting them up in Teams because Teams has gotten far enough along at this point that we can do that. It's, it's easy enough and adopted enough out there with the people that we're talking to that uh, it, it doesn't cause a hang up like it did a year ago. A year ago, it, it was, there were, there, were, there were too many roadblocks. You'd send yeah. out a team invite and nobody could figure it out. So it's like, we'll just set up Zoom and send that and that's a click and that's easy. Now, uh, not so much that way. Teams has been training hard. Um, so yeah, that, that's how we ended up with where we are. And so the, the research I found that the official debut was in 2017 for Teams. But at Strix, I remember, because David likes to just change things up a lot. <laughs> oh, there's this new thing out there. Let's do it. So I remember we were on, we were on a lot of these features of Teams before that. Um, yeah. So, you know, we have probably four years of experience working within the team's environment. Uh, we've adapted it, we've loved it. Uh, David has a great point that if you are first getting into it and setting it up for your business, it's okay to build and tear down. Right, David? Yeah, yeah, I mean, teams, the, the organization of teams is, uh, it, it's gonna be changing as you go. And it, it, teams originally was, was Skype, so everybody's heard of Skype, right? That that was a, a huge platform, and I don't, it's probably been over ten years ago now that Microsoft bought Skype, and it was it was kind of I think quiet at first. Uh, they bought it and they didn't they didn't change it much. What they started doing though was it, it, the Skype was more of a consumer level thing, more like a Zoom, um, and it was it was just to have conversations, video conversations. And they started implementing it on the back end and they started building out teams and and then it was skype for business and you know right now we're going through actually the end of life of, of skype for business uh, microsoft is starting to completely shut it down except for in some very special circumstances that everything now is is moved to team so you see that that evolution there uh but it, it's got a long history and and we've been working with it there was a a product called the Business Productivity Online Suite when I first started Strix uh, in 2008. And that was the precursor to Office 365, which is now Microsoft 365. It was, it was rough, it was brutal, but um, it just, that, that's, that's the history. Microsoft has been doing this a long time. Uh, now they're, they're probably the, the preeminent uh, force out there, even in this field. I agree. I agree. Now I'm glad you mentioned Skype because actually I said Zoom was my first. I remember Skype being my first ever video conferencing. Um, yeah. And it was, I was just amazed because for me, I always picture um, uh, Total Recall, <laughs> the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, oh, oh. And he's, he's on there talking to someone on the video chat on the screen and they're talking back and forth. When I first got on that Skype call, I remember that feeling like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel like, Arnold, no, what are you doing <laughs> over there? <laughs> and uh, that's how I talked the whole Skype conversation. <laughs> no one had any clue what I was doing or why I was doing it. Get, you out, get to Mars, get to Mars. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. So when time. you're talking about grandma and grandpa, you go to the mid Midwestern voice. When you get on a on a Skype call, you go to the Arnold voice. That's yeah. There's a, you know. Yeah. Don't try to make sense of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little confusing up there. So uh, 
Matt, I appreciate everybody for joining us today. Uh, I don't see we had too many questions that weren't already answered. We did have a few come in, um, unless David, unless I missed a few there. No, I, I think Bridget is a little upset that we didn't put a wager on uh, bringing the Jetsons into it because she knew that that the Jetsons were going to be brought into it at the at the very beginning. So, um, you know, sometimes we do a chill with Jim with it, and it's it's competitive, and you can win a an Amazon gift card or, or That's a true. restaurant gift card. I, I think she's a little upset that we didn't have that this week. Wow, she knew what was coming. But she's a she's a fanatic she's a fan a chill with jim fan so she is she's getting to know our 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 style um you know? yeah and, but and, yeah and, and tracy said you did a great job today so uh good tracy tracy adams thank Me you, tracy. you uh well she said we Me. did so okay. yeah well i think it was supposed to be it was that zoom shakalaka that seems <laughs> Well, she said, up, Scotty. she said she got in closer to the end, so she might have missed the, uh, the Zoom chakalaka. She's going to have to go back and watch that because she probably missed the best part. That I could be an announcer at a boxing <laughs> ring for about 10 seconds till my voice says stop. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you all for joining us uh, again. It's been fun. This one has been really fun for me. Um, learning about that technology, how far it goes back, I would have never, ever guessed. When I saw the 1964 thing, I was blown away. Then to find the 1936, wow, 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 wow. So David, what do we have on the books, on the docket for next week? You know, next week is a um, very proud, proud moment. We, um, we reach one year of Chill with Jump episodes. So we have done this religiously every single week for the last year. This must be our 52nd episode because there's 52 weeks in a year. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be celebrating next week. Uh, we're going to have a, a little trip down memory lane, look at the things that we've done over the last year, some of the highlights that we've talked about. We also have a, a big change coming. So, you know, we're we're talking about all of this Zoom versus Teams and is Zoom keeping up? And we're actually going to make a change on Chill with Jim next week. We're going to a different platform. We're going to be on uh, on the StreamYard platform. We didn't even talk about that today, right? Nope. Uh, StreamYard is, is a terrific platform for uh, delivering podcast or video cast, kind of like what we're doing here. What we've seen is people have gotten back into business, doing things the normal way. We're getting much more engagement on Facebook and social media. We want to be able to promote that more. StreamYard allows us to do that a little bit more. So uh, we, we still will be able to bring people on Chill with Jim if you want to be on. It's just going to be more of a, a, a of by request. We'll, we'll uh, give you the, the link if you would like to join us live on that Chill or you can continue to do like you're doing now. Join us on Facebook. We're also going to start streaming uh, simultaneously on YouTube and LinkedIn starting next week. So, you know, Jim, you talk about the same chill time, same chill network. It's going to be different next week. It's going to be same chill time. Same chill time. Yep. But we're uh, we're going to be on a on a different network. Uh, please excuse any technical difficulties we may face next week it'll be our our first go around with Streamyard. so um but we're looking forward to it. it it's it's a great platform yeah and one year so how comfortable i am in front of this camera has probably <laughs> changed quite a bit uh i've I, I still watched some of the first episodes and it's there's a lot different um feeling of comfortability that I have comfort right yeah. between back then and now uh, and I used to be a little more serious until I was told people are on here just to interact with Jim just be this Jim is, this is chill. that's all you have yeah, to chill do with Jim just chill with Jim and you're, just be you're the be fun you. guy you're the and fun I was guy. like oh wow okay and I think that was like episode six or seven and you'll see a big switch in how went from more of like a newscaster just to the the goofy arnold voice making dude so uh <laughs> check it out we'll be back same chill time different network but 
continue to um, join us, like us on Facebook, YouTube, subscribe, follow, LinkedIn, all of that good stuff. Uh, thank you, Don, Kevin, for coming on in. And uh, Kevin and Don is the same person, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's Don. Uh, yeah, I forget that's his real name. It's Kevin. Uh, or his, uh, whatever it is. So, Don, thank you for joining us. And Bridget, all those out there, we appreciate it. Tracy, thanks for the shout out. And we will see you next week. Thank you for joining us.